Hey there, thanks for joining us for this week's episode of Bloomerang TV. Thanks for being here. My name is Steven and I'm the VP of Marketing over at Bloomerang. And I'm really excited to introduce our guest today. He is Roger Craver. He's the editor of The Agitator. He's an author, he's a writer, he's a, a veteran of the nonprofit sector. Roger, thanks so much for being here. Hey Steve, it's a pleasure. Yeah, so you um, obviously you write for The Agitator. You put out really great content. Um, you've also been working on a book about donor retention. Can you talk a little bit about, um, about that book and, and kind of the things you're up to these days? Yeah, over the last three years we've conducted a study of about a uh, little more than 250 uh, nonprofits uh, in the United States, uh, Canada and the United Kingdom to find out why people leave and what organizations can do to keep them because as you know uh, since Bloomerang is big in this field uh, mm -hmm. Retention is a real big problem. In, in yeah. fact, I think for most nonprofits, it's probably the biggest problem they face. Most organizations think that acquisition of new donors is the most important, but it doesn't do much good to spend a lot of money bringing in new donors when they're pouring out by the bucketful. Right. Uh, they can't be uh, retained, and that's a real problem when <clears throat> in the United States only about 42% of the donors stay with an organization over a uh, multiple year period and that's a that's a great big waste of money so I've uh, written a book called retention fundraising the new art and science of keeping your donors for life and the purpose of this book is to show folks that there is an empirical data-based way of improving retention mm -hmm. you know up, in, up until recently most people considered uh, retention to be sort of a best practices uh, tribal wisdom type of uh, approach we should uh, we should do thank you notes we should do it on pink paper we should do it quickly uh, whatever an awful lot of uh, myth and old wives tales and none of it uh, based on, uh, in any type of uh, empirical data so now uh, with this, with this book, there are a series of uh, formula, there are a series of approaches. We've identified why donors leave. We've identified what donors uh, need to, uh, to stay. And you know, the interesting thing, Steve, is that uh, all of the retention problems except death are controllable by the organization itself. It's not right. the donors who, uh, who uh, determine this. Uh, it's the organization's actions that determine the donor's attitude and in turn the donor's attitude determines the donor's behavior so this is the one thing that an organization can absolutely control and they can't blame it on the economy they can't blame it on competition from other nonprofits this is entirely within their control so you're collecting all this data you're writing about it obviously you know groups like FEP and the Growth and Giving Institute they're talking about it obviously people at Bloomerang you know me and Jay we're talking about it Things aren't getting better, though, right? We've we've got seven years of FEP reports. You've got all the work you're doing, and it seems like things just keep getting worse. Why is that? Why isn't this retention problem really catching on and people really focusing on it? Because I uh, I don't think people are really focusing on it. I think everyone pays a lot of lip service to it. Yeah. Uh, when you when you look at a uh, when I, I do a lot of speaking, when I speak to a group of people and I ask the group. How many of you know your retention rate? It, it, you might as well be playing Mozart to a cow. Uh, <laughs> they simply don't uh, don't recognize it. They most uh, not most, but many don't even know how to calculate it, and uh, that's a real problem. You know the the the, uh, the, the reality is Adrian Sargent, who uh, who works uh, with Bloomerang, has said over and over again, it is uh, it is so much more valuable to retain. A donor than it is to pay the cost of acquiring a uh, a new donor. Right. Most organizations uh, continue to play the acquisition game, and the reason for that it's a lot simpler. It's easier it's easier to write a purchase order for printing than it is to sit down and figure out why are people leaving us, what do we have to do to keep them, and then start doing the the actions that keep them. And uh, measure it and watch the progress. It's a lot. It's a lot of work, but it's also worth a huge amount of money. Uh, in in this book, it's uh, it's pretty clear that almost every nonprofit can improve their 
lifetime value of the donor base by at least 130 percent by doing some simple things. Now that's a lot of money. So in a big in a big organization, uh, let's say 100,000 or 200,000 donors, that's uh, that's several million dollars. Yeah. In a small organization of a thousand or two thousand, it's hundreds of thousands of dollars. So it's worth it's worth spending the time to figure out why your donors are leaving and the steps you need to take to hold on to them. So in your book, which you gave me a sneak preview of, really great information in it, by the way, and I don't want you to give away too much because I want people to buy the book, but what are some of those things that people can do once they sit down and realize, hey, we've got a real retention problem? What can they do? Is it a donor communications issue? Is it missional? What, what are some of those things people can do to start you know, turning the dial the other way? Good, good, good question, Steve. In the uh, in the book, uh, we have we've identified what we call the seven key drivers of donor commitment. The the seven universal things that organizations need to do to hold on to their donors, and it ranges from being able to state the fact that the mission of the organization is being achieved, to thanking donors uh, promptly. To being consistent in your communications, you know most most nonprofits really get bored by their own uh, copy, so they uh, they spend uh, tens of thousands of dollars and hundreds of hours in trying to come up with the next clever appeal. When in fact, the same message over and over again, the continuity of these messages, the consistency of these messages, is really what they need to be uh, 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 concerned about. Mm -hmm. the, the, the process of thanking people, while it sounds uh, so simple, most organizations, in fact, 60% of American nonprofits do not thank their donors. Wow. And yet, thank you, uh, the thank you process is very important. And what we've identified is it's not only important to, uh, to thank people, but it's important to do it promptly. And it's important to do it in a personal way. By that, I don't mean the personalization of the of the donor's name. I mean uh, the the tone of a letter or a phone call mm -hmm. that, uh, that actually shows uh, appreciation. Uh, we've we've identified among the other drivers uh, such uh, such things as as showing quite clearly who who benefits from this donor's uh, largesse. And uh, in fact, even showing what uh, what's who some of the other donors are. People people basically uh, behave in fundraising the same way they do in human relations. If uh, if if you have a best friend, chances are that best friend or spouse or whomever uh, is is in that status because the bond of trust has been built between you, and trust is built. By, for example, consistency. Uh, if uh, if you promise your friend or your spouse that you will uh, you will meet at three o'clock in the afternoon at such and such a place, and you don't show up, <laughs> that's a that's a piece of erosion of the trust factor. And if you do it over and over again, trust is uh, is eroded, and you're not going to build a solid relationship. So to put that in fundraising context, if uh, if you send in a first gift, and uh, let's say it's for uh, for saving baby seals, and I send you back an acknowledgement letter thanking you for your contribution, and this is going to be really important in stopping the uh, pollution of the oceans with plutonium, that is not consistent, and right. that erodes the trust. Or if uh, if I uh, send you a uh, thank you letter instead of saying uh, uh, dear Steve it says dear Charlie and you call the uh, service center of my charity and you get a surly clerk on the other end who's rude <laughs> and you ask to have your name corrected and they say well we'll get to it but we're very busy thank you uh, chances are that uh, you're not going to uh, continue your relationship with that organization because there's there's no consistency there's no there, there, there's no proof uh, in your mind that this organization uh, will deliver, mm -hmm. and uh, that is very important. So, in in many ways, retention is exactly like uh, any other form of human relationship. In fact, the 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 theoretical structure in back of this book 
uh, is based on a proven uh, concept that has been in use in the commercial world for 30 years, uh, based on relationship theory. What makes for strong relationships? What weakens relationships? And even if you don't want to read the the whole book and go through all the uh, all the calculations and everything that are in there, I put a uh, I put a chapter in at the end called Cliff Notes for Retention. Hmm. So it lists uh, the ten things you can do that are inexpensive and quick to uh, to improve retention. And there's uh, there's also I. I Build a website to go with this book, uh, www.retentionfundraising.com, that uh, that will keep the book updated, enable people to ask questions, uh, have forums, and share uh, share information. So this is a this is a field that isn't fuzzy, that is very specific, very data driven, and uh, it's it's quite easy if people yeah. will concentrate on it to to make changes. I'm always struck by how easy and simple this advice is whenever I hear you you say it or read you say it or, or anything from Adrian Sargent or Tom Ahern. This is it seems pretty simple, right? All these donor communication things and relationship building things. And yet no one or a lot of people aren't doing it. Do you think this is ever gonna get better? Do you think we'll ever see those that thirty nine and forty two percent uh, retention rates go up in a, in, a, in a yearly report rather than down every year? Yeah, I, I, uh, I really do. If for, if for no other reason than acquisition is, is getting uh, so expensive mm -hmm. and uh, basically organizations will, will price themselves out of the market. They will, they will wither and die like a raisin if they don't pay attention to holding on to their donors because the, the old meaning, uh, the, the model that was developed uh, 50 years ago a very inexpensive acquisition where you could simply not worry about attrition rates uh, you mm -hmm. could simply replace the the donors who left with new donors that that is over the, the days of bringing donors in at a break even or even a profit are long gone and most organizations are spending between 25 and 50 dollars over and above what they receive in that first gift to to get a new donor, so it is it is absolute idiocy <laughs> not to pay attention to holding on to those uh, donors. And one of the one of the interesting things that uh, you guys at Bloomerang and gals at Bloomerang have done is you've you've made it uh, simple for people to track what actions they have to take. Right. You know, this is communication and. That uh, that CRM you have reminds people that there's certain things they ought to be doing at uh, at certain times. And uh, if if folks will simply paint by the numbers, right, will, they will improve their uh, their retention rate. Well, Roger, this is a lot of fun. We definitely want we don't want people to wither and die. So where can people find out more about all the work you're doing? Buy your book, uh, subscribe to the Agitator. Where can folks do that? Okay, well, uh, thank you. I'll, I'll make a, I'll make a shameless plug. Please, you, uh, <laughs> you, you can uh, uh, subscribe free of charge to the uh, to the Agitator uh, www.theagitator.net. Uh, you can go on retentionfundraising.com, and uh, the book is uh, is listed there. You can buy the book from uh, from that. Uh, from that site, or you can simply look at the look at the site. But the the website is coordinated with the book itself, so it would uh, it would help if you had the book as you uh, work your way through the site. Yeah, get that book. Definitely subscribe to the Agitator. The content's really good. But one thing I like about the Agitator is the comments on all the articles. There's a lot of good discussion always happening there uh, that you can get in on. So, Roger, thanks again for being here for a few minutes and, and sharing all the good news. Keep up the good fight. We'll keep talking about retention, if you will, and uh, we'll turn this thing around. <laughs> okay, Steve, uh, that's great. You guys keep up uh, the good work. Say hi to Jay and Adrian and Tom, and uh, stay at it. We'll all right. Work. Thank you, sir, and thanks, everyone, for watching. We will catch you next week, so talk to you then. Bye now. Okay.